Michelle Marie Donnie, and yes, I got a guest today. Hello. This is Daniel, and Daniel's a local young man here in Winstead. Um, we were talking about, before we started, about video games. Um, most likely a gaming kind of content, is what she's right. trying to say. That's what he likes to do. He wants to, he's into gaming. Yes. And, and you said that you might want to help me with my videos. Yeah, um, the, you want to know how I would help in uh, general? I, well, we can always use additional hands. <laughs> the yeah. reason why, we, the reason how I would help is, um, like, editing and such. If you have to edit your videos and not live stream sometimes, it's right. better to live stream, it's better to live stream these vid videos like this, but when it comes to gaming videos, it's much better to record them and then post them shortly after you're done editing. Right. And in this case, like with the live streams, which we only do on Saturdays, that's the only day we do things live. And that's usually very, um, stressful. Yeah. Because... I could tell last time I was here. Either you got people who are trying to... You try to get them on the show and they start playing music... Or they're interrupting you, or they're trying to hog the microphone for themselves. I've noticed that, and it's it's difficult because with the live shows, uh, we don't really get a chance to really talk specifically about a particular topic. Now, you and I also were talking in the beginning originally about what's going on with YouTube, and yeah. you you are most familiar with the the verification badge thing. Well. I don't have a verified YouTube channel yet due to the fact that I don't have many subscribers. The fact is, to be honest, I don't have any content on my computer at all, on my channel at all, due to right. the fact that, one, I don't have a recording software, two, I don't have a mic, and three, I just don't have a really good computer for this kind of stuff. Right. And of course, the other thing is, too, is that um, my channel isn't growing at all, really. Um, the main channel is at 494 subs. And we're going to upload this to the main channel. No, we should upload Talking to My World because this is... Welcome to your world! Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, speaking on YouTube's topics, the YouTube talking part of this... I know I said, like, YouTube is, like... Fucking up, pretty much. It's turning into, like, a soap operas. In reality, TV. <laughs> Um, mostly like soap opera drama channels. I know that. Like, there's a couple of people I, I know of that are into that, and they have their channels that they cover their personal life. Yeah. And some in excruciating detail, and and they'll live stream for like three or four hours and talk about things like the families and yeah their health. I know. And I've seen a lot of I honestly, like this. I don't see how anybody can really seriously sit through four hours of listening to somebody talking about the zit that won't go away. <laughs> honestly, if someone started talking about that, either I'll just leave the um, leave the video and go to something else, or just unsubscribe. To be honest, because I don't want to hear anything like that. Right. And it's just it's just kind of awkward. I mean, it's like. And then of course my channel originally when I had section eight, we were doing a lot we were doing some unboxings and computer part reviews and um I wanna get back into doing that again because I enjoyed showing people things. Like this camera has been featured uh, or we're using right now has been featured in so many videos. Um first of all, it's it's not an NTSC camera. It's a European standard PAL. And you can look at the picture over there on the computer and you can see what it looks like. Yeah. It's not bad if I composite. It's not it's not any of the fancy HDMI or SDI outputs. It's just standard composite PAL signal. And it going into a video capture device on top of the computer. And um and it's the way I've been doing it with this computer camera. 
Whereas the one that's mounted to the wall is a standard definition PAL, a NTSC camera. Um, but it's an older camera. It doesn't have as high of a resolution. Um, so with the standard DSL that Frontier gives, it's, it's about as good as it's going to get. So because everybody wants widescreen, so I have to shoot at 360p, which I could do 640 by 480 But then, of course, everything would have to be shrunk, like the, the chat comments and my facial expressions and everything. So, eventually I hope to be able to do 720p, but the problem is, is that, um, well, there's a couple problems. The first one is, my internet connection sucks. <laughs> it's, it's only one megabit per second up, 16 megabits per second down. And so, obviously, a 720p video will seriously saturate that, and then... If you want to have any Skype calls, or if you want to have a Google Hangouts call, you're done. And the comp the encoder gets really, really cranky, and then it'll just drop the connection. Like a New York second. Like, it does not like an upset. And it, it, it's, it's, it's just like, it's just like a very, very, very spoiled child. It will just, I don't want to play! BAM! BAM! <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's, it is that bad. It is that bad. So, and it's like, some shows like, well, I guess we have to keep it at 640 by 360, even though I want to go higher. But then everybody's like, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's the one problem that we have. The other thing is that the encoder is like, um, because it seems to work best if you work with a good video card so it can use um, the video card's graphics engines to encode the video. Whereas with it now, it's not using the video card's cores because this video card, which is an NVIDIA GT120, um, only has 256 megabytes of RAM. I think it works a little bit better now because the... Um, um, it seems like this sounds a little bit better now because I think it is actually using some of the CUDA cores to do the video, so it's offloading some of it the processor on the video card, the graphics. We're getting really, Maybe. We're getting really far off topic. Okay. We went from talking about um, well, let's talk about YouTube, YouTube for a second. We were talking about YouTube and then all of a sudden you went after right. Um, camera. All right. Well, let's talk about YouTube for a second. Let's go back to YouTube. Um, um, but before you start... Can I tell you something? Okay. I feel that a good idea with your um, unboxing videos, try doing fan mail. If someone, if you're doing fan mail, then people can send in ma stuff stuff through the mail and you can do an unboxing video. All right. I haven't had anybody send me much. I had one person send me a Dairy Queen gift card. I've done that. I've had friends send me things in the mail. I've done very few things, but I've unboxed them. I've demoed them. Um, so, but there's just not enough of that um, on a regular basis to really make it a major show. So, you know, it, it makes it harder. I mean, if I had, I mean, even though my address is out there, even though people know how to mail me things, the, not. the people that watch my shows don't just absolutely don't. do not care to send me anything and pretty I much mean, they're freeloaders correct hmm? that's how some people call them freeloaders they're people like that don't care about stuff they just only care about seeing the content and when the content comes out they're just like yeah I'm just gonna abandon it or well, like those kind of people. When, it, when we're done watching this, I'll show you some of the live shows in the past. I'm going to show you a live show from um, a few months ago. Because I want to show you just how raunchy it can get. And and you will probably find yourself, you know, seriously wondering how my channel never got totally thrown off of YouTube. You'd be surprised. Um, yeah. Did you know another thing on YouTube recently is um the whole copyright system how people have been falsing oh, copyright yeah. videos I mean, I ran recently. a follow of that because i played some music 
on my channel and they blocked my live stream worldwide, globally, and I still can't live stream. Even though I raced that video, that live stream, I raced it, and I still can't live stream. And I can't... Yeah, YouTube um, finally caught up their shit about that, because recently if you um, falsely copyright things a few times, your channel's gonna get banned. Completely. Right. Erased. Well, I didn't even get a strike. That's just it. I didn't even get a strike. And... Yeah. But then what YouTube is doing to its content... They're creators just, anyway is a lot of them are voluntarily banning themselves and leaving. They're just basically deleting their accounts and say, I'm done. Um, because YouTube has made it so unwelcome as a platform. It's not just a copyright content thing, but that certainly doesn't help. Um, because, like, even if I'm at the soup kitchen, and even though I'm not playing music with the radio sound, and I do a vlog, my microphone is super sensitive, and it picks up the, it picks up the radio. All of a sudden, I get um, a notice that the creator of the music, the content producer, is willing to sh share monetization if your channel gets monetized. And I was like, huh, that's really interesting. Considering this channel only has 41 people. <laughs> good luck. I hate to say it to the poor content creator, but seriously, good luck. It's, <laughs> it's going to take a long time. Even the fact is that people are not even, you know, subbing to my channel. Because see, part of the problem is, is YouTube knows that my channel is, is mostly a news and current events channel. And because it's a current event channel, because it covers current events... YouTube is like, well, oh, wait a minute. She's got a right slant. She's a conservative Republican Donald Trump supporter. Ah, take a out of uh, recommended videos, please. And then, of course, I don't get anybody to see my videos. And then I'm like, of course, I know what they're doing. It's like, you son of a bitch, you know? How are you supposed to create content when you are actually, you're actually aborted from the get-go? And even my main channel, because of what that one publisher did, which was a multi-channel network originally, MCN that did this, for the channel that was part of the MCN. But when I contacted the channel itself, they told me, we didn't have anything to do with that. Frederator Allied Media did that. I said, are, they, are you part of the network? And he says, yeah, we're part of that network. I said, do you realize that they're claiming that your content is theirs? And immediately they went, uh, no. That's not even saying property of Brightside. It's saying property of Bright uh, Predator Allied Media. So now their legal team is now wrangling with Frederator Allied Media over that. Because Brightside is would be willing to drop the matter, but Frederator Allied Media refuses. And since now Frederator Allied Media now owns their content, guess who wins? Them. They do. Hey, Karimba. It's stupid. Yeah. And I, I honestly hope they get their job. I did desserts. a whole video on that. I'll show it to you afterwards. Very, very sneaky, rotten little companies thing. It's it's the, now they, we're not even talking about the manual copyright things. If you want to get into that, that's that's even worse. Um, but let's let's talk about what Susan what Jickies did since 2016. Originally, people on I had the YouTube partner program for three years: 2013, 14, 15, and then to the 16. Actually, in 17, it actually was canceled in March because, unfortunately, I didn't have a thousand subs. I didn't have four thousand viewer hours. So what did I do? I went ahead. I started streaming, live streaming, five, you know, four or five shows a week, specifically to get the viewers up and try to increase the subs. Well, unfortunately. The people on my channel, a lot of them were trolls. They didn't like this. Oh no, they would sub on sub, sub on sub, sub on sub, sub on sub, and they was they were so toxic to my with any potential new user that comes in there. They feel like 
those new users felt they were stepping in a minefield. And I don't blame them because that's exactly what it is. A minefield full of trolls. Exactly. That's this what... is... When I want to make a YouTube channel or a gaming channel in general, yeah. if someone starts unsubscribing and such, either I'll ignore it or I'll report their channel for due to spam. That's how you deal with these kind of trolls. Yeah, if you know who they are, but you see, that's just it. Because, I mean, if you don't know who they are because they're not listing you as their subscriptions, you can't find out who they are, and but they can, sh and they don't have you listed. So, but obviously, if they're in my chat and they're making an attitude, yeah, they making if they're making it very known that they're the one unsubscribing and subscribing and unsubscribing, you can pin them down right away. The other ones I have, I have a personal distaste for is the like dislike trolls. Yeah, mostly I know. the dislikers. And there's two reasons. And YouTube potentially create, actually did create this problem. Here's why. YouTube's rating Algorithm. system used to be much more comprehensive. In other words, it would be like you know, like eBay feedback. You had eBay feedback used to be simple. Like, dislike, and neutral. Now let's become a little more sophisticated where you can specifically say what about each of those categories do you and like and then they fuck themselves up added these just removed the neither option and just did this instead yeah yeah that's youtube you really got to clean up your bullshit because you're not helping yourself so you're even, making things worse so in short even if you do a great video no. and someone just personally doesn't like you Dislike, and even though theoretically they say the dislikes don't mean crap, it means something to my spirit, my psyche. And if it's like a slap like in the you. face with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. Being slapped in the face with a fish, that means you can throw the fish back. Right. Well, so here's the funny thing. I started kind of simulcasting my shows onto Facebook. And the Facebook shows have a lot of views. They don't have a, they, they don't have a lot of dislikes. They they have lots of likes. They actually have lots of likes. Mostly like three or four people, but they like the show, and they they would say like. And so for them, it's been a great thing. I try streaming on Twitch. That's a hard room because frankly, look what I'm competing against. I'm competing against gamers. And my show is not a gaming let me, show. I want to make rephrase that for you. You're competing against Fortnite streamers. Fortnite gamers, um, a lot. They have a own league of their own at this point. The way YouTube treats it. Speaking of Fortnite, oh god, is I heard something about the season of Fortnite didn't start up right away. It was delayed. Yeah, um, they kind of had. The first season of Fortnite go out with a literal black hole. They sucked in the entire world, battle bus, players and all, and left the screen for it, for all games, a black screen with a, with a black hole in the middle right. for three days straight until they finally started up the next season. Right. I understand that that was just for a um, whole, when the season finally came, that's when they fixed it, but, uh, you know, if you want people to keep playing the games, don't just delete the entire map. Save it as a little backup, just in case something doesn't work. Right. Although, yeah, I, that's... although I like some of their new features, like their fishing, fishing mechanic, where they can throw in a fishing rod, and you can fish up items and such, like weapons and such. Alright. Yeah, but... Well, like I said, I don't know anything about, um... Fortnite. The game Fortnite, or oh, really Minecraft. I know something more about nine, Minecraft a little bit. It's a sandbox game, it's, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. And from what I understand about Minecraft, is kind of like a creating game. You create things. That's what a sandbox game is. It's a creation game. You can pretty much create your own world. Right. You can either go in survival, which is named states, or you can go in creative, and that's where you get to build maps and such. 
Right. Some people actually live stream while playing Minecraft, while well, they're talking. So that way you, the players, the people get to watch what you're doing while you're talking in a face cam. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that don't worry about the screensaver. That's fine. <laughs> it just turns the screen off after so long. Yeah. Um, is that, like, when... I know I said Fortnite, they like to have a lot... It's more like a shoot 'em up game. It's a, um... To be more exact, it's like Call of Duty in a way. It's a, um... Right, yeah. Pay-to-win, um... Shooter game. Is there any game... I mean, besides World of Warcraft, I know World of Warcraft is kind of like this. I mean, it's, it's a little more... It's it's a role-playing game. There's a lot of role-playing games, actually. Some that are lesser known due to, well... Right. Certain providers not and then using there's them something as much. Called, I think it's also part of my... Um, Blizzard called Elder Scrolls. El- oh, Elder Scrolls, like uh, Skyrim and such. Yeah, Skyrim. Yeah, they're... Um, they're they're not truly called Elder Scrolls. The company, the company is called Bethesda. Bethesda. It's they made the games Skyrim and well Elder Scrolls in general, and another subs game called Fallout, which is it's kind of like Skyrim but in a more futureish um, Fallout kind of thing. Right. You know, nuclear bombs and such. Well, for me, when I look for a game, see, I think this is harder for some women in. And want to get into gaming is because so many of the games, of course, are oriented towards the masculine male audience more than the female audience. I mean, there are some female players in these games, absolutely. But for me, I'm looking for a game that's less violent, well, if that makes any sense. I still want a role playing game, I just don't want one where you're shooting everything that moves. Well, there are some role-playing games where you still have to fight. That's how the turn-based system works. However, like games like Pokemon, for example, right? You catch animals, you do that kind of stuff. But when you actually fight, you're not using yourself to fight, but you're using the animals to fight. For right. example, Charmander versus Bulbasaur, fire versus grass, that kind of stuff. Right, and and Pokemon is ba- Go is based on another game which I do have installed on my phone. I did have installed on my phone. Um, ah, Pokemon Go. Ah. Ugh, it's the black sheep of the series, to be honest. Yeah. I I was growing but up. But some people have actually benefited from the game, though. I mean, it's it's like... Well, well, the whole slogan of Pokemon Go is to go outside. Go outside. What's wrong I with that? Rumba. I mean... Because Pokemon was a handheld game, so you can go outside either way. Right. Most people just stay inside, though, due to the sun... Affecting their screen. So basically what they're doing is they're merging a virtual world on top of the real world. Uh, it is, unfortunately, it's not perfect. See, you It's end not up, perfect. If, like, if you see your desired Pokemon character, and he happens to be, it looks like in the game, like he's on a field, but actually he's not for Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to start feeling like Coyote before he looks down. Oops! <laughs> Pew! <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there has been some funny moments with Pokemon Go. Like the most infamous, infamous being Diglett in a tree. <laughs> if you don't know, Diglett's a mole Pokemon with most of his body underground. But it, its sprite is just that. But when it's in a tree, it doesn't, it doesn't look right, to be honest. All right. Like on a tree branch. it's There's dirt. There's, no, there's nothing else after that. It's just... A tree branch. And there have actually been, of course, in, in the game, that the people who have contacted the company that makes Pokemon Go was like... Um, Nistanic, There were places that they said, please do not have this in the map. One of them was like the, like the police department. Like one city. Like all of a sudden, the police department was one of the places in the game. And the police officers were like, please remove our place... Which is the which is the, oh, I remember like, that one the time. Department from there the was game. this um there was this one point where some pe- some people were going into prisons because for some reason there was a whole abundance of Magikarp, which are very rare in the game. So most common Pokemon in the main series, Pokemon Go, extremely rare. Yeah. And there's just people raiding the prisons for these Magikarps, 
and people are like, what the hell are they doing? And immediately they look at their phone and see a bunch of magic carpets just flopping around. Right, exactly. <laughs> they and don't then, even realize where they are until they look up. They're like, where am I? Uh, actually, you know, this isn't related to Pokemon Go. It was, this is a true story. There was this one woman who she's texting on the phone, right? Yeah. And she walks into a, wa- into a water fountain in the mall. Oh, she's talking. Well, she's typing on her phone and text message when she's walking, and she walks into the water fountain of the ball. <laughs> How is this related to Pokemon Go? She was oh. so distracted by her phone that she didn't even know where the fuck she was going. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Have you ever seen a um Eevee inside of Downton before? Oh, what? Mike, an Eevee. It's a type of Pokemon that's in Pokemon Go. Um. Yeah, some guy walked into the ocean, kept his phone up while looking for an Eevee that's smack dab in the middle of Highland Lake. <laughs> I'm not kidding on this. They literally went into the middle of Highland Lake just to get an Eevee. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> well, that's the only problem with the game is like it doesn't actually keep this is good. Why- of the real actual landmarks of where you are, you know. <laughs> and when he finally took the picture of it, it's just the Navy just sitting on water. He named it Moses. He finally, Get it? He finally when he caught it, he, he caught it and called it Moses due to the fact that it was standing on water in the picture. <laughs> it was literally standing on the water. Then again, it's just a sprite. All but right. still, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's just supposed to point out. Oh, but where some of these games when you're overlaying a virtual world on a real world. Just, yeah, just, sometimes it just does not work. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> like the Diglett and the Eevee. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, so the thing is, is that um, in my case, like I said, I want to try some gaming on my Mac. So I got to get a video card, but I'm, not, I'm still trying to decide if I want to go with eight. AMD ATI or NVIDIA. AMD ATI is one company now, so we'll just say ATI because that's what they're known as. And NVIDIA. Now, oh, God, NVIDIA. Whatever I, you do, do not that try card live computer streaming. Now, no, that card in there, even though it's an old card and it's really, really very bare bones basic, it's an NVIDIA card. No, and no, it's no. nice because it doesn't need extra power connectors. It's PCI bus powered, so I just plug it in the car. No additional power connectors. Works fine. Um, so I was looking to get a card similar to that, but a newer one. It's so like an NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti. Um, and I've, I've read reviews on them. They seem to be pretty well liked. And then they... Um, then it comes in broken, right? Huh? There's sometimes when people take pictures of it, then yeah. send them in broken just to troll people. Yeah. Yeah. That honestly makes people pissed off at sometimes. But I'm every time I've got something from places like um eBay and stuff, they've always been in perfect condition. So thank God I'm not one of those people who got something that was broken. You're right. And you're not a person that's gonna you would be pretty pissed off if you ordered something on eBay and it turns out I mean nothing like you wanted. Yeah. Like um, there's some people who ordered like a um Oh yeah, there are uh, people do that. Ordered a T Rex. Gets Carnotaurus. Same thing. Well, I don't even know where I got this. Honestly, this little Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's a Carnotaurus. It has three fingers, not two. Oh. <laughs> See, T Rexes have two little tiny fingers. These have three. And it has three in the back. And it also doesn't have this frill on the top of its head. Oh, okay. See the red? That's a frill. That's a um Carnotaurus. Like I said, it's a uh, it's a frilled T Rex, but it has three fingers, and it's much. Well, it's the teeth a indicate the teeth indicate the triangular teeth indicate that this would be a meat eater. Yeah, of course, because it has floral fangs. Right. Clearly, I wouldn't want to be have somebody sink that teeth, my teeth, in me. Rawr. No, um, it's kind of interesting Rawr. to think about it. Um, so, but. Anyway, the point is, is that, so, the Rentress rebate I'm waiting for is coming in a couple of weeks, and I really need to get, like, besides computer things, I was going to buy a MacBook. I was going to get an older MacBook. I really wanted to get the 2010 white MacBook. Even though it's not the most modern, it's only got a, a, um, 
Intel Core 2 Duo processor to 2010. Um, I thought for every day you should be fine, which it would be. But I've seen the prices of these things they varying really from to you're insane to that's really, really not that bad. Um, I've seen one for like 105, 120, 130. That's reasonable ones. And then you go into the manufactured refurbished and they're like 200, 300, 400. 400 is as high as I see them, but that's like one that's loaded with an SSD. That's one with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Then you're talking about um, really, really top of the line. Probably installing something like um, Mojave on it. I know you were saying, how the hell can you install Mojave on a 2010 Intel Core 2 Duo MacBook? Well, um, there are ways. Um, I wouldn't put that much on it, I mean, because I really wasn't looking for anything really fancy. Um, it's a 2.4 gigahertz processor. But, um, and then I'm like, well, given what's going on with YouTube, it's like, do I really, really want to get this? Because YouTube is not being YouTube very fair. is pretty much gone because of policies as Susan Wojcicki and others. They are, and when the 50 states attorneys general gets done with them and the Federal Trade Commission in the United States. And then the European court system and the Prager U court case, it's going to look like Levi Brown with a couple of pieces gone. It's going to be seriously, probably be disvested under antitrust regulations. And like I covered in my video, which I will show you, is that it's YouTube is too big, it's too broad. It's covering too many countries. And some countries have some very tight restrictions on what they can share. And this is creating a real major nightmare for YouTube. Because if you had a YouTube America and a YouTube Europe, that would be better. You split it down the middle, and you know, there's going to be some overlap. You know that. Knowing YouTube, they're probably not going to do it and just cause themselves to just ruin everything. But in the case of YouTube, a lot of the stuff that they're doing is self-reflected. They're just... Like oh, they're... believe me. What they did to the um, verified thing, they kind of um, deserved it because they got so much backlash. It's oh, not here's even the funny. The verified thing. Why even change it? That's what everyone was. Why? Backlashing about that and the verified people losing their marks. That was what got YouTube back on their shit. They decided to not do that until next year, but still. Next year, they shouldn't even be even on their menu at all. That's a stupid system. And I what's know. the point? You take away the mirror of what they say, oh, well, it's not that important. Excuse me? Excuse me? Hello? Yes, it's important, especially for big channels, but even the little channels. Do you know how many fake Michelle Marie Delaney pages there are on YouTube? Yeah. There's like two or three of them. And you know what? They're not mine. So how do you know where the real Michelle Marie Delaney is? Obviously, YouTube doesn't. <laughs> well, after, unless shortly you know, after... Unless you know my exact page's URL, you're not going to know. <laughs> okay. Same thing with my Welcome to the World World channel. Because that doesn't have a custom URL. It's got the generic random numbers and letters that they use. And you sit there and going... Wait a minute. You know, like, what is the verification supposed to do? Verification is supposed to be a way to verify that your channel is the real channel. This and is that's why they got something... so much backlash immediately after they got this. They got literal threats from not only YouTubers in general, but from other sites that have the tick mark, the um, verified mark. All right. Twitter, um,. Which, um, Facebook, all those accounts, yeah, everything, they got pummeled by Twitter due to their fact to their unverifying Twitter, literally. They did something like similar on Twitter. I heard about that, and I also Twitter has done a few stupid boners too. You know, um, at least Twitter knows to keep their act together and not and take I'll, away verified. And at this point, not to potentially screw the main revenue source which for them is streamers 
okay? If you, they tried to become like a YouTube. They tried to say, well, you could actually upload videos and you could share your videos and stuff as YouTube. But because they were set up for streaming from day one, that's what they're good at. Um, there's a bug inside your, um... I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean... Th there's a bug in your curtain. What's that? There's a bug in your curtain. See the thing moving? Right there. See it moving? Yeah. Looks weird. Yeah. See so these, by the way, this is my, uh, my, my 16 millimeter movie reels up there on the wall. Um, mm. yes, I have a real projector that goes to them, too. And I have I'm a real I'm gonna have to take off soon. Okay. So anyway, would you like to be on the show Saturday? Sure, but I'm probably not gonna be um, using the phone again because my mom doesn't want me to use the phone. So I'm probably just gonna stop by before you um, start recording. Well, the show starts at one o'clock. Then I'm gonna show up after the soup kitchen. And there's no soup kitchen this weekend, so. Um... Oh right, you do one on Saturday. I thought you meant Friday. Sorry. <laughs> ah. All right. And what day is today anyway? I think it's, it's Thursday. Thursday. Right. Tomorrow's so, Friday. So, yeah, why don't you come on, if you can make it for, for Saturday. I think this is the kind of thing that most of my audience would love to have. You Just know. another voice and such. And it's nice on you anyway. And and I'll show you some of the video I mentioned to you, too, before we go. Do you want to say anything before you uh, end the stream? Yeah. Okay. Don't trust Fortnite. <laughs> Oh, it's good. bad for you. Yeah. And also, don't forget, we will be live Saturday. I promise you that. Will Daniel be with us? Most likely. or Possibly. Possibly. We'll see what happens. All right. We'll see what happens. All right, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right.